this was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. You want to see how I built the quail hutch and why I did it the way I did? Keep watching. got an interesting building project for this episode. We wanted to have two things. A chicken brooder outside our house because we're getting tired of having smelly messy chickens inside our house when they're growing up. And we're interested in growing quail. So this would be a combination chick brooder and quail hutch. I've already laid out some some pieces here and put in a few of the brackets to hold it together. You don't have to see every single screw I put in. I'm just using these little brackets to hold these pieces together and keep it all in position. The chick brooder itself will be, I have to apologize, somehow an important section of the early part of this video didn't record. My camera's been doing that from time to time. It just stops recording in the middle of a, a sequence for some reason. It's very annoying. Anyway, what I was about to describe was how the chick brooder would work. It's two sections. This one is just big enough for the plastic bin, and that plastic bin is just big enough for our chick warmer. Incidentally, we highly recommend going with the electric chick warmer rather than a heat lamp. A heat lamp is kind of a fire hazard. If it were to fall into the pine shavings, it's so hot it could create a, a fire. And a lot of people raise these chicks in their house so you could have a house fire. The other section of the chick brooder has a pass through right here. And this is where the chicks can go when they want to get a little more fresh air. We'll probably also have their uh, food and water over here. Just so the rest of the building video makes sense. I was building this hutch under the carport upside down so that this plywood top was on the ground. I did that so it was a lot easier to screw in all those little brackets. I had explained that one of my primary concerns with this project is to make it predator proof because it is outdoors. With our Mini Cooper mobile chicken coop, we had a lot of problems with a raccoon that would eat our chickens before we put up the electric fence around it. Some of the chickens didn't die outright. Sometimes they were just missing toes, which meant that the one layer of hardware cloth on the bottom, the raccoon was able to get up in there to, to try and get out the chickens and was able to reach their feet. It's just, it's gruesome. So with this, I've designed a way to do two layers of hardware cloth so those vicious little claws can't reach up all the way to where the chicken feet are. This two by four is part of a big square that I put on top which would be underneath the hutch when I was building it upside down after I put the hardware cloth over the section for over the two sections for the chick brooder I was then able to put the full layer of hardware cloth on for that extra protection the quail hutch sections didn't need that second layer of hardware cloth quite yet because in part two of this video I'll be building the ramps which will be in effect another layer of floor and another layer of hardware cloth for that second layer of protection.
The staples just tack the hardware cloth in place. To really hold it down, I use screws and washers. So you can probably tell, based on the dinginess of this wood, that almost all of this thing was built out of scrap material. The uh, legs I'm going to use from old fence posts. They're pressure treated and still have a good, good life in them, so I uh, might as well reuse what I tore out for the old fence on this project. To make the brooder quail hutch high enough so that it's a comfortable, comfortable for us to work with. I'm going to just set it right on top of this old rabbit pedestal because it's a pretty comfortable height for the uh, rabbit cages and it's just convenient uh, at hand way to, way to do this project. Yeah, surface area a little bit. And you got to go up higher. I can't go up any higher. <laughs> 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 you lift from this end as much as you can. I'm going to try and lift from more or less in the middle. No, I can't see where the pedestal is. You'll have to guide us. Are we in the middle? No. Which way do we need to go? That way. You can't tell because you're moving the thing. Just put it down a little bit. Okay, let's, let's lift it up. Well, I can't because it's cold. It's not level. It's not level. Not level. Not level. Well, I also wanted to build it here because it's under shade rather than doing it out in the sun out there. But if this isn't going to be perfectly level this way, maybe we should just carry it out there. So a new plan. It's not perfectly level. So building it here doesn't make as much sense when we're going to be carrying it all the way out to the front of our property. We're going to go ahead and take all this stuff out there and build it in place and try to level it as best we can in place. And then we won't have to carry the big heavy thing with the legs attached. 
This is the craziest darn jury rig thing ever. I've got this thing balanced up on the temporary rabbit pedestal with the pegboard to spread out the uh, surface area so we're not stressing the hardware cloth down there too much. I've got it shimmed up with a couple of sticks and a 2x4 down there. I've got a cement block over here and this watering can because the whole thing was a little tipsy I could just drag these weights along the top into different places to finally confirm that it's level. Just slowly working my way around until, until it works. Before I assembled this, I pre-drilled a couple of uh, pocket holes using a Craig jig just so it would be easier when it came time to put these legs on. Each of these legs are custom cut based on the arbitrary distance from the hutch to the ground so that the roof would end up level when it came time to screw it on top. The next day, and I'm continuing work, I've got 2x4s clamped along the bottom to give the structure a little more, a little more support. And today, I'm going to put the painted panels on and I'll build the roof for it. I think it's kind of cool to have this really rustic old split kind of warped uh, scrap material paired with freshly painted new looking panels. It'll be kind of an interesting mix of uh, old and new. The roof is going to be all new material so that will be you know just a little more functional.
had already trimmed back some of the branches of this tree back here. Now I need to trim some of the lilac over here that's going to be a little too close to the roof.
This piece is one of the snippets from the 4x4 legs that I trimmed a little earlier. This is a uh, little solution that I'm kind of proud of. Because our the chick warming side of our chick brooder is this plastic container, the plastic containers always have kind of a, a tapered quality to them. And I didn't want the, the chicks going through the passage and falling down and getting stuck you know, between the, the wall and the, and the plastic and, and dying in there. So... I created this. Out of some scrap. Same hole saw to make the, uh, the two openings that I did before on this one. Just glued them together. I've got a picture of, of, uh, of that. And it just simply slides in there and just takes up all the room that it needs to so it's nice and snug. I've already got the roof screwed together here to put the roof panels on. As always, I'll be using these screws with a rubber gasket. I knew I wanted to build the roof with about a foot and a half overhang on all sides, but to get the precise dimension I laid out I laid out these panels just to play with the spacing to get it as close as possible to what I wanted in this case it worked out to just be full panel and for the width we're going to be overlapping two of the uh, grooves on the outsides and three of the grooves on the center seam going to move the roof out but first a little bunny cameo
fucked up. I'll just fix it from there. All right. Thank you. Sweaty. Yes. Look. Okay. Spider web too. <laughs> So you might be wondering why I built the ceiling so high. That's just so I wouldn't hit my head on it. We might be able to do something with this storage space, either just putting things in there to keep or uh, more likely rigging up some automatic waterers with these five gallon buckets. This is the hardware cloth for the top of the brooder so the chicks can get a little ventilation. these pieces to screw into this top piece of plywood so I'll have a spot for the uh, doors when I make them for the uh, different cubby holes to be able to screw on with hinges. I've also pre-drilled with the Craig jig pocket holes to be able to screw these things into the 4x4s just to give it an you know, another place to tie into the main structural support. One nice thing about adding this uh, piece of wood is it gives me something to attach the hardware cloth to from the underside. <laughs> 